Kame and our advocate the justice. So, uh, Alfred, CP Alfred, you will be taken through a north before you introduce yourself and comment on the contents of the letter that we sent to you. Hello, sir. Yes. I'll take that you stand up. I'll take, yeah, I'll take you through this out. Okay. You'll start with the part, say hi, then you'll put in your name, okay. do the part which uh, says, so help me God. Okay. You may as well proceed. I, Alfred Lagat, having been invited to give evidence and produce documents before this ad hoc committee on World Bank sponsored projects, do solemnly swear that whatever I shall say, I will say and produce before the Honorable Committee shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in line with the Constitution of Kenya and all other laws of the land, and that I will not be, and I will, to the best of my ability, aid in finding the truth without fear favor, bias, affection, or prejudice. So help me God. He'll proceed to put in your name mm -hmm. and sign. Thank you. All right, CP Langat, you can be able to introduce yourself and comment on the letter that you received. Uh, thank you, Chair and uh, honorable members. My name is CP Alfred Lagat, uh, the CC member in charge of finance and economic planning in uh, Nandi County. Uh, yes, I wish to confirm that I received uh, an invitation to this committee uh, to appear uh, to shed light on a number of the uh, undertakings that the ADO committee is uh, taking through. Uh, indeed, there was an invitation and also a request for me to, to provide certain information which was to be provided by yesterday, 3 p.m., which I wish to confirm that whatever I was, able to, whatever I was asked to, I was able to, to provide and I will, I'll be shedding maybe further light in line to the questions that I'll be asked. Thank you. Uh, in the letter, we asked you on the matters about the municipality and not specifically on the issue of accounting officer. Would you comment on that? Yes, uh, Chair, the, the letter asks me whether I've been able to, to designate an accounting officer in the municipality, and if so, I produce documents to that effect. The answer to that is no. Uh, at the moment, we, we do not have a municipality accounting officer, uh, simply because the municipality still is domiciled and the operations of the municipality are domiciled under our Department of Administration. Uh, of course, we have a, a municipal manager who shall eventually be the accounting officer when all the processes and procedures that are stipulated in law are adhered to. Thank you. So have you appointed the CEO for administration you are referring to as the accounting officer for the municipality board? Uh, in my appointment for accounting officers, I appoint based on functions. All the functions that will finally be ceded to the municipality are still domiciled under administration. So by extension, appointing the CEO for administration, in essence, means he oversees all the functions until such a time when we clearly transfer certain functions and make the municipality an autonomous function, that is when we'll be able to separate. So the accounting officer covering municipality is the CEO in charge of administration. Is the accounting officer? Yes. Why have you not been able to transfer, or, or uh, why have, has there not been transfer of functions to the municipality? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, there are certain provisions in law that uh, will eventually lead to transfer of functions and appointment of an accounting officer and therefore treating the municipality as a, a semi-autonomous agency that shall be reporting periodically to the, to the executive. One of them is in line with what is provided under the County Governments Act, what is also provided in the P Public Finance Management Act, what is also provided in Urban 
areas act urban areas and cities act and what is provided in the physical planning act which requires that for functions to be transferred and therefore for funds to follow functions there has to be a certain plan that draws a roadmap in which all those funds shall be spent finally in this case the idep which i know has been discussed uh, extensively and a strategic plan in this case the idep draws its authority from the county integrated development plan so once an IDEP is in place, approved by the executive, and finally forwarded to the assembly for adoption. It means then that the functions or the items, uh, the items put in the IDEP can then be resourced and treated independently, and an accounting officer be put in place to oversee those functions. So this has been an ongoing process, and I've been able to advise uh, when we came in, I'd been able, and this is the letter I'd shared yesterday, I'd yes. been able to advise the the CEC who eventually was able to cascade the same communication to to the municipal board on the items that I needed to be put in place for me to effectively be able to transfer the functions. And the letter was dated uh, September of 2018. I shared a copy yesterday. Yes, we have a copy. Now, you're talking about the roadmap. Do you have that roadmap? Can you be able to highlight the roadmap and the timelines for each one of them? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, in essence, once the municipal charter was signed, that basically set things rolling so that the next thing that should have happened within, say, give or take three months, was basically to look at what is in the county integrated development plan that touches specifically on the municipality, be able to isolate that and build on it by way of developing an integrated development plan for the municipality. Uh, and of course, that, that, that can always be done by a consultant and all that, so that within three months, that, uh, within three months of signing the charter and uh, putting in place a municipal board, the next thing that ought to have happened is to set a management, uh, a management body within the municipality that shall oversee the day-to-day functions including the development of the IDEP and therefore for me a timeline of anything between three to six months should have been enough to put everything in place including the IDEP which then would have been followed by the next financial year the next uh, possible financial year or by way of a supplementary budget we would then be able to designate the municipality as a separate body and instead of putting a line item in the in our overall budget we actually do a comprehensive uh, uh, budget and even give them authority to 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 apply a, a appropriation in aid where they really don't have to to get the resources to the county before they can access they can actually spend more or less by way of appropriation in aid thank you now uh, for failure to get that done what is the recourse well number one is I know we can't really say there's been failure. Perhaps there's been extended delay of getting that done. But in the meantime, before that is done, it remains the municipality still remains domiciled under the Department of Administration uh, until such a time that they really we have what the act, especially for me, my guiding principle is, is Public Finance Management Act, which really requires that for functions to be transferred and for funds to follow those functions, there has to be a plan in place. So until this thing is sorted, we'll still have the municipality managed and the accounting officer being the same accounting officer that is in charge of the administration department. Maybe, Chair. Yes, Honorable Gideon. Um, what is hindering or what is causing this unwarranted delay? in terms of development of those items that you say should be developed? Chairman, I think in concurrence with what Mdubu has asked, so that... Uh, yes, or no? Yes, Mdubu Gideon, Chairman. Uh, yes, Mdubu Gideon, Why the delay, uh, uh, and I'm sure maybe there's been some deliberation on this extensively, is that number one is 
the board really, the constitution of the board is not really old per se. I mean, this was done in 2018. And therefore, they had 2019 to put their house in order. Therefore, I would say the delay has been the spillover that has come over to, to the year 20, 2020. But uh, principally, I would talk of the process of executing the IDEP has, has had its uh, ups and downs. And I know the department tried to, to, to get the best way possible to execute it and they were able to go for an institution, in this case, uh, JQuad, to be able to speed up the process. JQuad being a related body, a government body, they were able to engage them directly so that they were able to get the process sorted. There have also been uh, issues at the board maybe that have been highlighted and the approval process and lack of a clear developed roadmap for, for, the, for the team to know exactly what are the milestones that need to be done. And I believe the department now has developed that roadmap and which answers uh, Honorable Chapter Wise question of what are the plans to mitigate that. They really need a clear roadmap and I get the information that they now are working on some schedule of time, which I hope they should be able to provide. Nonetheless, there'll still be, there'll still be challenges here and there because a plan before it is fully adopted has to, has to go through several levels of reviews and finally it shall be presented to, to the county executive before being brought to this house. So I realize they might still need possibly another six months or so if things work well so that they're able to fully comply with it. Maybe, maybe well, we didn't clear. who is this supposed to Thank you. Uh, we have a planning function uh, at the county, which is domiciled in the Treasury, but also under the, uh, the Department of Lands, we have the planning function as well that basically would deal with, with other plans that emanate from the, the bigger plan, like the urban areas plans, the neighborhood plans, the PDPs and all that, uh, and, the, and also the, the, the urban areas and cities plans. So these should be a collaborative effort between department, which is planning, because they are the custodians of the CIDP, they are the ones who, at this point, they are able to give a midterm review, and also the planning department within, within lands, and of course the, the host department administration. So those three departments ought to, to work on a clear roadmap. So in a nutshell, you should be telling us that this is the roadmap I have developed as the mother mother department because in a nutshell as you are handling the planning department you you also handle finance so i think you should be giving us timelines as to when this roadmap should be developed and subsequently uh, giving an undertaking that it should be uh, up and running the, at this rate uh, clearly <clears throat> to pick on what Honorable Gideon has said, planning aspect of the county is domiciled. The issue of strategic plan and for lack of existence of proper structure in your municipality. So if the municipality failed to do it, it will have been done. Or even the lead team to do a strategic plan for them with the IDP is in planning. Don't talk about the issue of land. It is clearly planning component which is customized in your department. So your department did not take lead to do a strategic plan or the IDP for the municipality. Uh, thank you, Chair. Not really. Uh, number one is my department chair is involved in the entire uh, planning function at the county, uh, and that's why we we're able to develop the CIDP. In the absence of IDEP, the municipality still operates, and the operations is guided by what is in the CIDP. And I wish to confirm that even though we don't have an IDEP, it doesn't mean that the municipality is moribund. There's still progress because already what would have been captured in the IDEP anyway is in the CIDP. 
and therefore the the administrative or the the the, the operational task of splitting what we've provided it in IDEP is something we did not to do by way of micromanaging uh, a department when already we've provided the clearer, bigger roadmap, which is the CIDP. Uh, nonetheless, it has always been confirmed to us by the department that they were in process of developing it. We've always been available as and when should they needed, should, had they needed any consultation and we still perhaps to just clarify on what uh, Gideon is saying is that yes, we've not had that joint meeting, but because of certain processes that have been running within the municipality, I believe at this point they are now alive to the fact that we need to conclude the matter, and maybe the next best thing is to go sit down now and harmonize and look at the progress they have done so far, and we give our input as a planning department. Now, I want to refer you to specific clauses, sections of the law, appertaining your response to an action on the by the County Executive Committee member for Finance in a manner provided under Section 148 of the PFM Act 2012. Section 148 of the PFM Act reads, A County Executive Committee member for Finance shall accept as otherwise provided by law in writing designate accounting officers to be responsible for managing the finances of county government entities as it is specified in the designation. It has not given the requirement. Five, 175, section 175, subsection. Upon approval by the board in sufficient time in the case of cities and municipalities for their approval as part of the annual county appropriation bill. So they send a request for consideration in the budget making process. Instead, you refer to them to develop a strategic plan. And again, I will read to you, Waziri, Section 39 of the Urban Cities Act again reads, A board or town committee shall within the first year of election adopt a single inclusive strategic plan for the development of the city or plan area for which it is responsible. So, the board you are right in your letter to write to them on September 2018. And I would read your letter. In response, the letter written, I would first read the letter written by Morogo. Request for inclusion as a separate entity in the annual budget preparation from financial year 2019-2020. This letter was written in 17th September, signed off on 21st September. I wouldn't want to go to what they have quoted, they have quoted all the coin of act. Your response was on dated 25th September, three, four days after you received the letter. In reference made to your letter on 17th September, requesting for
process shall form basis for the development of urban cities areas by the proposal. So you are asking of them to develop a strategic plan which does not inhibit the allocation of a budget line as per requested and as by the law, which the law mandates you to appoint or designate an accounting officer and also to prepare a budget for them. If I will take you again, the 175-1 in, in reference is talking only of a, a requirement for strategic paper. Two is the strategic plan along with any further guidelines. So what are these other guidelines? You have not given any other guidelines save from what has been mentioned as a strategic plan, which will have been able to be developed by the first one year. And it has not made failure to submit then deny. So this is an action beyond the provision of the law. What do you have to say about that? Uh, thank you, Chair. I think uh, you've You've quoted a number of uh, sections which are indeed uh, relevant to this. Uh, yes, uh, starting with the Public Finance Management Act, Section 175, really requires that I have a strategic plan. Yes. Uh, now, uh, as to whether I should have uh, made a provision in the budget in absence of those documents, I wish to state that number one is that we prepare our budgets in program it's a program based and a program based you have a program you have the objective and you have the medium term frame and the impact of the objectives and the medium term framework uh, chair if you look at section 40 of the urban areas cities act of 2012 yes. there is a critical thing that i mentioned that that would explain why i wouldn't make a provision in the budget without looking at Section 40 of the Urban Area Cities Act. And there are a number of uh, bullets. The first one is a long-term board's vision, which is not necessarily assessment of the existing level of development and lack of, and, and lack of basic services. Number four, which is the most critical, is development priorities. Number five, special framework. And then Number six, the most critical, is the financial term, financial plan, which is the medium term expenditure framework. These are some of the submissions that, in the absence of an IDEP, I would want the municipality to give me the priorities in a form of a medium term framework. And in this case, I've said the deriving, the, the authority they're deriving this is the CIDP. So, therefore, in the absence of a clearly broken down uh, medium term expenditure framework for a municipality i wouldn't really be able to factor in in our budget which is program based what i can the best i can do is to include the municipality in the budget as a line item which we've done we you find that in our budget it's a line item but there's the actual breakdown of the development programs lies within the department itself and you find that the only line item I have for the municipality is number one, salaries and a few operational recurrent expenditure. But as to the actual uh, breakdown of the development projects, I just still drive from the CADP, which would have been very easy for them to just adopt what is in the CADP, tweak it to fit the municipality and just be in compliance with the law. If again, we are the planning uh, function within the county. We wouldn't then allocate funds before we can see clearly what are the functions that are the municipality shall be undertaking and what exactly do they want to achieve both in the short term, the medium term, and the long term. Therefore, it is safe from planning function not to let funds go when you really haven't seen what plans are there in place. And actually, the law provides for that. Clearly, mm. what you are alluding to, even for failure to submit uh, the strategic plan. The CIDP is existent. And the functions in reference to the municipality have been captured under the department. Isn't it? So, it would have been as effective, like you're saying, that for failure to have that, the CIDP would have come to play. Right? Because even so, 176 of the same PFM Act, which you are very good at, says, in a situation where there is no uh, uh, if, if an annual county appropriation act for financial year has not been 
ascended to or is not likely to be ascended to by the beginning of the financial year, which in this case we want to, to, to refer to the municipality, the existence of the municipality, you can be, and you said it yourself, that for lack of that, they can be allocated or when appropriated in aid. Isn't it? To enable the municipality to be able to function. You did not. And like I read earlier on, say from the strategic plan, any other guidelines required by you, you know, you have the authority by law to say, give this. You have only talked about the strategic plan. Knowing there is a CIDP. I would want to take uh, us to argue this, uh, members, that even for the departments, every department, they have an ADP. Isn't it? Which is always developed to inform the fiscal strategy paper. Did you seek of them to comply? Because annually, you seek that the departments comply by developing the ADPs and has proper timelines. Isn't it? You have not asked them to com comply with this within that timeline to be able to get that. Like I've read section 39. You have read section 40. Section 40 is only highlighting what the composition of that uh, strategic plan will be able to ensure that it considers. Th thank you, Chair. For, for, for purposes of planning and uh, for my finance purposes, in budgeting process, for me, municipality does not exist if you don't have an accounting officer. An ADP would, I would ask of an ADP of a department that exists legitimately by way of having a fully fledged accounting officer. Before we get to the discussion we are having, let's assume the municipality does not exist because we are attempting to appropriate resources to an existent body financially. It exists on paper, it exists in whatever functions they are doing, but these are functions ceded to it by the department. Up to until when we really know that they exist legitimately by way of even us knowing exactly in your strategic paper, so who are the staff, who are the key staff you have. And you know very well, like national government really can't give us resources as counties until they are sure the resources that are being sent there, there are people to, to properly manage the resources. So in this case, for purpose of financial management, our municipality on paper exists, but not in the spirit of what it ought to do. And therefore, I still stick to the fact that I couldn't, and I'm sure I would, I would be brought back to this house to say, why did you transfer functions when there is clearly what is stipulated in the law that they ought to have an IDEP, they ought to have a strategic plan, and you need to know the staff composition and the capabilities of that to be able to appropriate funds to that. So I wouldn't really do it, and I think for to make it easy, we are better off sticking to the provisions of a plan, which for information chair is really not rocket science to avail this information and further guidelines which we usually give for example every every august i ask of all the departments to show me the staff composition the the capabilities they might need in implementing the next budget cycle i would want to have from the municipality i would really want to say to to see that which will be captured in the strategic paper that we have a well-resourced procurement function, we have a well-resourced technical team, urban planning and all that, which is really not there. So to allocate resources to something you don't know how it is so, well composed, it's, it's So are you not saying, are you saying as uh, the CC for finance in the entire county, you do not recognize the existence of the municipality? For budgeting purposes, the municipality is under uh, administration. It doesn't exist as a separate Fair entity. enough, sure. fair enough. So even so, yeah. did you have you advised, uh, knowing that it exists under administration, have you advised the CC for administration or the CO for administration? Because you said it yourself, that in the meantime, this, the accounting officer for the municipality is the CO for administration. Have you been able to guide, like by law required by law, the CO to develop? Yes. Or even consider, mm -hmm. ensure that the needs of the municipality are captured within that department. Yes, absolutely. We we are always in talks with actually are you guided in written guiding both the CEO administration, the CC, Is it in and even the municipal team, not in writing, but we've always engaged on these matters, and I know they would confirm the same. As the CEO for finance, the CC for finance. Yes. When one year elapsed, and you know that by law, the, C, the, the, the municipality is supposed to have developed their strategic plan. And planning, 
is localized in your department? What action did you take? Uh, well, one is inquiry on the process, which I've been briefed. The IDEP has been ongoing by the consultant. No, what? Two. One year elapsed without a strategic plan. Yes. One year, not IDEP, a strategic yes. plan. Yes. What action did you take? M my worry hasn't been so much that the, I the IDEP is not there. My main concern has been is activity happening well guided in the absence of it and the point has been yes because we have then your, your worry would have has been the activity and yet you have said they need to comply one of the issues that you've sought for compliance is strategic plan yes and it has not been complied with and the law the charter one year and that component of planning is in your department what action have you taken uh chair one as i said is and we're always were you aware that first of all were you aware that the, guide, the, 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 the act, the Municipalities Act, required the municipality to have developed the strategic plan within one year. Yes, of course, I'm aware that. So what action then did you take once one year elapsed? Because you are actually right on the law as of the September when you wrote the letter. Yes. Because the municipality just came to being around the same time. So one year later, that is September, um, August 2019, mm -hmm. you expected this to have been done. And being the CEC, in charge of planning, yes. what action did you take? One, the action is only to, to speed them up with the process they've already been engaged in, and so that is what, what is, is ongoing. Action? How did you speed it up? No, we've had meetings with the, with the team that is involved. We've had meetings with the, with the municipal leadership. We've been able to, to, to know exactly what are the challenges, and I've been briefed on, on the challenges they were facing on IDEP, but I think they're on course now. So now we are the budget that you have submitted to the county assembly yes. will be uh, should be adopted by end of this month. Now, has it captured the municipality? Not as an autonomous body, still domiciled under so administration. So it will be two years. Yes, so to say that that would take them to two years. Honourable Cynthia, Chair, um, I just want a clarification from the CC Finance. I want to know the kind of planning that happens in the Department of Finance and the kind of planning or the kind of plans that are developed under the Department of Lands, Environment and Natural Resources because I think we are getting a bit confused here. We are not sure which plans are being talked about when it comes to the Department of Finance and which ones we are talking about in regards to the Department of Lands. Uh, Could you respond to that? Thank you. Uh, I think principally for, for finance, it makes the document that then shall inform all the other plans. So ours is the CIDP. But when it gets to certain specific uh, plans that uh, are domiciled in other departments, like the special plan, the urban areas and the, the urban plans and all that, would ordinarily be domiciled, uh, and even the IDEP, that would be domiciled under administration or lands, whichever, depending on how you want to look at it. So we do the CIDP. The technicality of, say, a special plan would be such that that has to be done at the Department of Lands because that is more specific to lands. But that is still looking at the, uh, for example, developing special plan, they have to develop in light of the provisions of the CIDP because when the CIDP was made, it was all inclusive. It really factored in the possibility of future plans like the urban plans, the special plans, and even the small plans like the PDPs and all that. Okay. Uh, just the last one. Uh, all right, Honorable uh, Cynthia. I think uh, we are in agreement to the point where you mentioned that special urban and the other specific plans can be done. Uh, you, you use the words depending on how you look at it, either Department of Lands or uh, Department of Administration. From the time that you have been um, in the executive, to the best of your knowledge, where exactly is the planning su function supposed to be domiciled? Because it looks like it is partially in lands and partially in administration. Uh, that basically depends on how uh, His Excellency in his competence, the governor re uh, feels that a particular function should be best in because when I came in, there was a reorganization of the departments and that doesn't stop us from further reorganizing. So I believe uh, if we were to relook at departments afresh, we might have to change certain functions to fit to what we've now learned so far in terms of the technical knowledge that is needed. But that notwithstanding, that doesn't stop departments from cross-collaborating 
even before we change anything because we can always so for example lands can access resources within the municipality the municipal guys can still access the technical resources within lands yeah. Honorable Chair, I think uh, what I want to ask okay. has been asked. All right. Now, uh, CPA Langat, have you received any request for budgetary allocation from the municipality? If I can recall, and I, I think I would need to check my file, yes, there's been a request previously, and I think one of the requests was uh, the point when I now was able to respond to that later. Part of it was the request to have it uh, fully fledged and all that. So after this, re this response in 2018, has there been any correspondence between you and the municipality between 2018 and that on the issue of budget? Uh, likely no. None. Well, I would have to check my file, but I would believe those would have been the normal administrative responses. So there has never been an engagement as to the operations of the municipal board from 2018? I think the department has been investing its energy in fixing the IDEP and getting other things right, including, of course, actively being involved in the projects that are on the ground. Yeah. All right. Now, on the issue of, uh, let's come to the issue of assigning an accounting officer. Yes. You say the accounting officer for the municipality is the CEO. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you written a letter designating him as the accounting officer for the municipality? Uh, yes, Chair. I appoint accounting officers every beginning of financial year and I scope to them the functions. So, so when you look at the letter for the accounting officer for administration, it cuts across. No, does it, does it specifically? No, Oziri. Uh, let, me, let me pick it from this an example. The, non, uh, the County Public Service Board is an independent entity as well as the municipality. So did you assign a, an accounting officer to the municipality, to the public service board? Yes, I did. The CEO is the accounting officer. Did you write specifically? Yes. That on this matter of yes. the county public service board? Yes. Now on the matter of the, uh, using the same standards, have you written a designation letter to a CEO for, to be accounting officer for the municipality? You see, I, I, Chair, thanks. I said you cannot dis distinguish the functions of administration from the municipality currently. No, it's but not distinguishing. I, it's yes. not distinguishing. Yes. Just saying, you know, you have been allowed, you have designated him as the CEO and accounting officer for the department. But now there is an independent entity that will be under you. So also inclusion, to include not only on the functions, the functions which you have said are still customized in the... Mm -hmm in the department, an entity called the Capsabet Municipality Board? Uh, I'd say for, for purpose of financial management, that municipality does not exist in financial terms. So it will only be functions of the administration which the municipality's functions are inside there. Because I will tell you this, Waziri. Mm -hmm. The functions of the department, which are shared, well now, or should have been transferred to the municipality, is clear, including the staff. Mm -hmm. Since the municipality has not employed, they're still from the department, isn't it? Yes. Say for the functions of the municipality. The department does not recognize the board members, even expenditure on that the, the board membership or the board is not anywhere in the administration unless with now the coming to life of the charter and the urban cities are. So it is clear you needed to have been able to designate someone specifically indicating the municipal board and the municipality. Well, thank you, Chair. The municipality has functioned, including even paying the allowances of the board members, because in the absence of a distinct municipality complete with its accounting officer, the board members have always drawn their allowances from the same kitty that the public service board members draw their allowances, the audit board committee draws their allowances, and therefore they have not suffered any, uh, or so to say, they have not been able to say they are unable to function because of finances, because 
every time they've been able to meet and every time they need to be facilitated, that has always happened because a budget is there only that it is in the overall county budget. The only thing is just segregation and letting them autonomously manage it. That has not happened. The issue is you not designating a CEO to take care of the municipality and the municipal board. That is what we, are, we left it that, we leave it at that. And when you say that they have always been facilitated, we, 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 they, we have been able to meet all the board members, including the chairman mm -hmm. and the manager. A very good example is that the board members have not been able to visit the sites of the projects that are under Kenya Open Support Program because they say there is only one problem, facilitation. Well, and not all the board meetings have been paid. The allowances, are, not all the board meetings have been paid. So has that come to your attention? I like the fact that Chair, you're saying not all, meaning some have been paid. Yes. Uh, number one is really to say that the board needs to be facilitated to move around is laughable because, I mean, you can as well just pick a car and move around because our municipal, the radius within our municipality is so short and I wonder what kind of facilitation would be needed. If we've been able to facilitate a number of board meetings, including in Mombasa... Has it come to your attention? That is the question. Has not at all. It has but, not been brought to your attention. But that, do, that would even not augur well with me because we've been able to facilitate them to go to Mombasa among various other... Uh, request they have made. So to say that going around is lack of facilitation, I, I think effort in questioning should be directed elsewhere because that would so be... So it, yeah. it has yes. not come yeah. to your desk? Sure. Not yet, yeah. Yes. Honorable Gideon? I think uh, it cannot be lovable to say we, to seek facilitation. These are not full-time employees of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the county. To facilitate means to provide everything needed to be able to undertake their responsibility of doing oversight of projects. So I think this, it, it should not uh, be accepted that the, the CC is talking of being lovable. This is, this is, these are not full-time employees. Chair, let me clarify to yes. you, Honorable Koech, that yes, these people are not full-time employees, but they are entitled to an allowance, an allowance which is determined in under SRC. That has always been given to them. So I ask the facilitation you. chair, maybe in this case, might be provision of a car, I don't know, unless that's exactly... It. That's exactly what you're saying. They say that they have said request to, for facilitation. And I'm, I'm only interested in if it has come to your desk, are you aware? I'm not aware. Fair enough. Okay. Honorable Elfas? Chairman, actually, you have asked what I wanted to inquire from the CC member. That actually, a number of uh, board members who are complaining that they have not been able to supervise some of the projects which are undergoing because they lack facilitation. Now that the CC member has shed light that they are entitled to, I don't know, sitting allowances or monthly allowances as stipulated by the SRC, mm -hmm. that's a point that actually we would want to watch. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Bona CPA Lakat, there is uh, as the CC for finance, how much money? was granted to Cap 7 Municipal Board by Apansa, the World Bank. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, in the financial year 17, in the financial year 1819, we had 177 million shillings for UDG or De Urban Development Grant, uh, which is the monies that you can see the projects that are ongoing currently. Uh, give a breakdown of uh, the money from the KUSP. Breakdown in terms of... Uh, we have UIG and UDG. Oh, yes. Uh, we have UIG, UDG, Urban Development Grant is 177 million. Uh, UIG, uh, I think we received 41 million. I could confirm 41 million, yes. 41 million. Yes. As this money, where is this money banked or is it deposited? Where is it held? Uh, the UDG is held in a commercial bank account uh, in line with the guidelines that we received from the, from the national government. Yes. And in this case, they're in uh, our commercial bank, Kenya Commercial Bank, Capsabet okay. branch. That is where the account is domiciled. UIG? UIG, we 
had this in the special purpose account with the central bank. Central bank. Mm. Who are the signatories of both accounts? The signatory provides for the municipal manager, the chief officer in charge of... Which one? Which one? Specify which... which, which uh, that is SUM. Or the right, UDG. 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 That is SUM. Yes. Uh, we have the chief officer in charge of administration. Yes. And we have the chief officer in charge of... Uh, in charge of finance. In charge of finance. And then UIG? UIG, that would be the same circle of people. The same circle of people? Yes. Can, can he confirm? Can he confirm the signatories? Of yes. The, be specific with the signatories. UDG yes. and UIG. Yes. Are UDG. they the same signatories? UDG, UDG, let me be very clear. UDG, you have said the manager? Yes. CEO, administration, and CEO for finance? Yes. UD, yes. UIG, that is UDG. UDG, for yes. For Yes. For U capacity building, that's UIG? U UIG, I would need to check a detail because before, when it's still domiciled in the central bank account, then uh, I wouldn't think I have not introduced the municipal manager. That would still be managed by the chief officer in charge of finance, uh, the chief officer of administration, and the uh, director of finance. Director of finance? Yeah. And yet the requirement requires that the municipal manager is an is, is a directory. And, uh, the and guidelines. Uh, that is provided for. The UDG, yes. he's, he's there. UIG, UIG requires also that EBS. UIG, when we open the commercial bank account, we just admit. You know, you, you, you de, uh, any operation of a So you have account. not admit. Who admits? Who? Who admits? The I am the one who admits. So you have not upon admitted Upon opening the an account. So you have not admitted the manager? I will admit him when I open, yes. No. Sum is not. Has, for Sum is has already been deposited there at the CBK, isn't it? Account. Yeah. Yeah. Which the current signatories are the CEO administration and the CEO of finance and the director. Yes. And yet, you are the one who said it, the, the guidelines is that the manager. Mm -hmm. So the manager needs to be a signatory here. Uh, the manager needs to be a signatory when we open the commercial account. This is a central bank account. How much has already been spent from the 41 million? The 41 million is historical. All of it was spent. Long even before the guidelines came. So it was, it was or before the guidelines came? Yes. So it was spent uh, without the knowledge of the municipal manager? No, not without the knowledge. The yes, the, it was not a signatory. That is not the only way to know where the money has been spent. You know why I'm asking you? Yes. He's, he could not be able to account because he said he yes. doesn't know. He is not part and parcel of the signatories. No, but he, so he can't even do a report yes. of that expenditure. No, the person to do it is the chief of administration, not the municipal manager. But it was meant for the municipality. municipality. Which, whose accounting officer is the administration CEO? But there is a manager who knows to be on the know. We definitely report. Because who reports to the board? Is it the CEO or the manager? I, I believe now the CEO has been co-opted into the board also. He is co-opted as a member. Yes. But not as a manager. There ought to be a management committee which then shall form its structure to know who reports to the board. You and I knowing. Yes. All of us. Yes, yes, of course I'm saying. The structure of a board. Yes. There is a chairman and there is a secretary designated. Yes. Who is the manager. Yes. The rest, even the CEO and the CEC, mm -hmm. are members. Mm -hmm. So who informs the chairman for purposes of deliberation in the board? No, oh, for these purposes, the municipal manager... No, so, ordinarily. Uh, the CEO. Who is the manager, isn't it? Yes. In this case. Yes. And for purposes of uh, discussion on deliberation on the issue of the Up and Support uh, pro uh, Program, yes. All reports from the committees, what you're calling the project management committees, it should all be sent, at, it should be sent to the manager. And then the manager tables or provides for the chairman in the board. In this case, uh, strictly speaking, financial terms, the accounting officer should do the reporting because he takes responsibility. Someone who doesn't take the ultimate responsibility cannot report, but he can only give further, because I know the manager must have been involved even in the development of the so work fair, plans. Fair, fair enough. Yes. Fair enough. Even if the CEO, who is the accounting officer, yes. does the financial reporting, yes. he reports to the board. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. Are you, in, are you aware of the report done on the UIG that has been tabled before the board? Uh, no, I, I'm, I wouldn't be aware. You wouldn't be aware? Yes. So even because if I read the, even the guidelines from uh, the World Bank, yep. the Bank Support Program, mm -hmm. Uh, in section is B, obligations of the county government. Mm -hmm. 
to specifically E, ensure that goods, work, services, finances from the proceeds of the urban institutional grants and urban development grants shall be procured in accordance with the procurement procedures established by law on the Republic of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Same to reporting uh, that uh, on J, ensure that all reporting financial as well as progress reports are complied and submitted as by the KUSP guidelines, which are these, and ensure pro proper compilation of complaints and issues of environmental uh, procurement, fraud, and corruption. So proper financial reporting as per existing laws. Existing laws is you are the CEC for finance. Mm -hmm. The CEO, who is the accounting officer for the municipality, there is a money, a grant, has been spent by the department. They do financial reports. You ought to receive. Uh, on that account, Chair, yes. In fact, when you look at our quarterly, yes. quarterly reports, receive. we receive quarterly reports, and we make quarterly reports, which we even submit to this house. Correct. So, yes. as I am asking, you've yes. gotten reports from this grant expenditure? Yes, which is amalgamated in the overall county report. Fair enough, but you are the one who amalgamates. So if today I ask you to give me the report from the uh, KUSP grants, yes. which formed your quota report, you can be able to give me an extra? Uh, of course, I would. Would you be able to provide yes, that? Yes, of course. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Honorable To stress on this, I don't know whether I had the municipal manager actually say we have not prepared any quarterly and submitted any quarterly report. Yes. Now I want to inquire, I want to, I'm hearing the member saying that we received the quarterly reports from where? Thank you. I think it is clear you got the quarterly reports from the CEO. From the CEO, yes. Right? Yes. So when the CEO comes here, mm -hmm. we will ask him where he got the quarterly reports because the manager has not, and the board confirmed by the chair and the manager mm -hmm. have never developed or adopted any report. Mm -hmm. But you opted on what was applied to you. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, on the same, are you, do, is there any report from your office to the World Bank or to the national government where the World Bank funding is customized? Uh, thank you, Did you Chair. give any report yourself? Uh, you, yes, the, the World Bank guidelines uh, always requires a specific CC in charge of the projects to be submitting the report. So in this case, the person who submits is the CC in charge of administration. So you don't? I don't submit. I only myself. wanted you to say you are not. Yes. You do not yeah. report. You do not submit. Now, let's go to the issue of 177, the signatories. Mm -hmm. can, can, I, can, I, can I ask something? About yes, Honorable Kaj. Honorable Kaj. Um, what happened to the funds allocated to the development of EDEP for Nandils? Which financial year? From the 41 million. Uh, well, I would, I would need to get the breakdown of that uh, to understand which particular figure you, you're talking of. Because the, the whole of 41 million was appropriated into what they call the key result areas, including finance, uh, public finance management, and human resource and all that. And to the best of my knowledge, it was spent as such. So you are not aware of uh, the, the plan that was sent to World Bank in requisition of the funds that included the development of EDEP for Nandils? As an aspiration? Yes, because Fire before the funds are released, yeah. there must be some kind of no. work plan. Honorable Koyech, I think you can reframe your question to say, yes. are you aware of the projects that were to be funded from these grants? Yes, I know there, is, there are several projects and the funding was not to be only one of. We only received for one million. We are yet to no, receive it's okay, another but the projects, the projects had already been? Yes, uh, uh, though not off-head, but I know, I mean, those were the projects that Would informed the money. Do you remember if Nandil's was I, I don't remember Nandil's, but you cannot be wrong if it is there. Honorable Chair. Honorable Ngetich. Uh, how much were you expecting from UIG? How much was is expected? It, yes, is it 41? The 41 million is what we were expecting, which we were given. Uh, the other figures, which were in the CARA, County Allocation of Revenue, uh, which uh, this house is there, we, we are yet to receive, and I think it should be a figure of another 40 million thereabouts. I would need to check. 
but cha is is nandi hills within the municipality you will be told about that later okay let me ask what are the guidelines for the expenditure of UIG funds in relation to formulation and uh, bringing up of yet to be established municipalities or town setups or just answer the what are the guidelines for expenditure for the UIG? Uh, thank you. Yes. Whereas I might not know about the anticipated uh, municipality which might be next in Nandi Hills, I know there were key key result areas that the UIG uh, stipulate uh, meant that the funds be spent on, and largely these were capacity building for purposes of uh, getting the counties to be ready to be able to properly implement the the udg so i would speak strictly speak maybe on my key results uh, the, one of the key results areas which is to strengthen the financial management system and the interventions that needed to be done for for us to be able to effectively manage uh, the funds so the other key result areas would be i would refer you to the uh, the handbook the world bank handbook are you aware that are you aware that one of the guidelines is to institution even coming up with uh, setting up committees in up, up, upcoming um, even towns not even municipalities yes and why are you saying nandil is not part of the municipality no i think we, we uh, are yet we are yet to even finish our problems order, within the municipality order, order. I, I think i would uh, i would rather we defer that question to the cc for administration uh, honorable walter Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, I have only two questions or three to ask. One is uh, to a series: Is the municipality budget formulation process compliant with key dates uh, in the prescribed laws in relating to the county budget process? Uh, well, whether it complies with the with the key dates, the well, uh, I'd say the the budget is domiciled in administration. So yes, I would say it complies. Walter uh, okay and how because uh, when you check that the process is supposed to end by uh, 30th July which we have uh, we have only one month to go yet when you see the the, 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 the project is not actually halfway so when you you you, you say it is a uh, compliant are you able to meet the deadline in terms of uh, the work done by the contractor Thank you. Well, uh, whereas we we know that we've run behind schedule in terms of the project implementation, the key thing that the department has been able to make is communication to World Bank on some of the challenges that uh, we received during the implementation of the project, including delays that were occasioned by rains, uh, and of course uh, some challenges with the contractors, which then have since been addressed. But there's been an, a demonstration that. Uh, we've paid at least 50% of the funds based on the work done and that to World Bank is fair enough in terms of judging us that though we started though we are behind schedule we are headed somewhere and that periodic reporting is what is helping us but but you said you do not have any report that you submit to World Bank you said you don't have when I say we it's the entire county so it is the administration be specific it is good to be specific to say the department has reported because I, I we are still interested to know why you are not reporting you have no report or you have no relation with world bank as a cc well i thought we are one so still confirm that you have no role in the world bank funded projects save for the fact that the money has been granted to the county because i will be asking you this as a follow-up question the projects that are being undertaken under the uh, department and municipality have there been payments that have been made yes because there's... you authorize payment right yes to receive you may not receive but you must authorize payment yes yes how many how much has been spent uh, well to to answer your first question is that number one is that there is correspondences with World Bank, but through the line department. Okay. 
that captures the input of all of us and critically the department is working together is basically finance and administration but the reporting officer is the cc in charge of administration okay and that is the aspirations of world bank two is uh, yes there have been payments made and the confirmation i got from the chief officer is that we paid about 50 percent. so that comes to about about 80 something million paid to the contractors and uh, we, the chief officer will be able to confirm the exact figures you approved. I just want to know your approved payment. Yes, uh, definitely any withdrawal from whereas there are signatories, it has to be brought to my attention by both the signatory, the people who sign the the complete the part payment uh, certificates and the chief officer who has to let me know of all drawings from the account. Okay. So whereas this one is not like through if miss where I approve the final payments to central bank. This it's brought is, to your attention. This is brought to my attention. Yes, and I'm aware. Fair enough. Maybe. Uh, Yes, Honorable. You Gideon? said to contractors. Do you happen to know how many contractors? Uh, well, uh, the projects were divided into two. In this case, the, we have the the Juakali sheds and the street lights and the and the urban whatever economic uh, whatever which covered the the sewage systems, the non motorized uh, truck and all that. So, I mean, the, the requirement is. 50 million bare minimum amount to be procured is 50 million so as per the tender participation two contractors were engaged um that is on udg yes what about uh, under the other programs uh, right. uig uh, which particular program are you referring under uig what is the use of the 41 million the 41 million was for capacity building which was undertaken including capacity building we undertook for the members of this house and you see that has already been what about yes it it falls under what which, which that would program? be under uig uig yes that's why i'm saying yes how much has been paid to contractors you're saying 50 percent and i've asked you how many contracts you've said two the the said it is under a contract is it not under contract to a consultant uh, well i thought we were referring to the udg so under uig of course there is a a consultancy which is happening for the idep uh, in this case uh, jomo kenyatta yes jomo kenyatta what jomo kenyatta university of uh, agriculture and technology are you confirming that the payment has been made to the university is it is it is it payment made to the university account well uh, i would have to confirm i don't think the payment has been made that is something I need to, to check with my records, but that would be the university. As to whether it's a consulting arm of the university, I would need to check. It was indicated that uh, Jake Ward has a, an agreement, an MOU with uh, Nandi County. Are you aware? Yes, there is an MOU. So who, who is in the MOU? Whose name starts with Jake Ward? Uh, well, I need to, just like... Uh, Nairobi. Are you party to the MOU? I'm not the signatory to the MOU. So I have to check. Uh, it has to be the, the, of course, the county secretary on behalf of the county mm -hmm. and the other party. But an MOU, of course, as I said, would not be binding to, to grant a contract. It has to then have another contract for specific tasks that shall be undertaken. So maybe the, the exact information is to get from the contract. All right. Then uh, you said uh, IDEP. There is a contract for IDEP. Is there any other contract? No, that I know of. What about the renovation works at the municipal office? Where does that fall? Uh, well, that might still be the, the normal budget that is not using the, the, KDSP, the KD, KUSP funds. Are you confirming that uh, the renovation of the municipal offices is not using the funds, meant, uh, the, the grants from World Bank? It's not using because I know of a tender that was undertaken for two projects under UAD, uh, UDG. So if there is a renovation, it has to be using another budget. That one is noted, Honorable Gideon. You should note that. Honorable Walter. Okay, Chair. Uh, I want to ask about... Uh, uh, the, the amount that has been paid to the contractor, that is, uh, the CC has said it's 50%. Yet, uh, uh, the work has not been completed. And uh, again, there, is a, there has been a delay in the, in the uh, project implementation. Uh, Chair, I want to ask, who bears the liability arising from 
the extended contract at there any cost attached to the same uh, contract in delays respond to that thank you uh, let me answer the last one as to whether there are these liability or cost overruns as a result of the extended contract is in this case no because extension the the delay or the extension of completion time is really not occasioned by the county number one is one of the reasons cited uh, and i'm sure the ceo will be bringing is the the rain the long rains which then hampered the progress of the report or of the execution but really we 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 will not have any cost overruns as it were and if it was to happen that shall then be uh, discussed but at this point that has not come out and since most of the projects are heading to 70% completion i think i i can confirm that we are within the budget and well, on your first question of how much has been paid i said from my last checking uh, the two contractors had been paid about 50% each based on the certificates that were raised and the uh, works that were assessed but i know there could have been another cycle of payments based on new raisings of certificates because uh, of course payment is strict i mean in in financial terms we insist that payment has to be made based on work that has been done okay has there been any any variation in the said uh, contract uh, not that I know of. I know one contractor was seeking some variation uh, on the Jokali sheets, but that has not been done because in law, you cannot vary unless you've completed the project and finished a certain period of time. But you cannot vary a project that you're, you're yet even to get to, to its to end. Start. Yes. Okay. okay uh, one last one, Chair. Yes, Walter. Uh, on the issue of uh, directors, <coughs> are you aware that uh, the directors have not been paid their, their dues? They are in uh, the municipal directors yes uh what i know is there are certain allowances out of tens of allowances there could be one or two that had not been settled uh, but that doesn't mean that they were not going to be settled so if the, it's possible that there is a debt which we have always paid just like all the other staff they have allowances running into into several months so it could be there but i would need to check that i think that that had already been responded to okay. now there's a question that i don't want us to miss mm -hmm. as a stickler of law yourself because you keep referring to the law you say that the report that is being ch uh, ch led by the department to the world bank you the, there are two working departments your department finance administration, ad administration uh, the two of you, the two departments. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to imagine you have sat to discuss as a team a report to be submitted to World Bank. Specifically, our interest is the requirement by World Bank for an IDEP for the county to get the second tranche of the grant. Are you aware? of a document that has been forwarded to World Bank to that effect. Yes, I'm aware the last document was basically on the progress report and responding to the findings that the World Bank had given us to, to ensure that we comply with so that we, we qualify for level two funding. So I'm aware of such was a it Was an IDEP one of them? Yes, an IDEP was one of them. So an IDEP was forwarded to World Bank? Yes, I'm meant to understand an IDEP was forwarded to them for purpose of compliance. Now, you being one who sticks to, to the law, the law. Mm -hmm. the law requires that IDEP, that IDEP before, needs to have been adopted by the board and forwarded to the county assembly. Did you seek to know whether the board had approved that IDEP? Uh, well... Thank you, Chair. Yes, this is a case of which, which, is a, which is a lesser evil. Okay. In this case, I would rather we have a working document given to them for purpose of securing funding and we come and normalize it later than to f stick to the law and say, no, we will not forward until it is approved and we lose the funds. The net effect of the latter would be detrimental to us. The but it former, is a procedural. It is procedural, but procedures are meant for us and the circumstances can actually be explained under which that happened. Very good. Yes.
So even the lack of approval by the assembly is procedural. No, not at all. I, I, of course, the, the truth of the matter is that item that was forwarded to World Bank shall we be withdrawn once we have one which has been approved. So would we say the county lied to the World Bank? The county did not lie to the World because, Bank. Because, no, because yeah. you gave World Bank a document just to fit, to qualify, which was not the real document. Uh, the real is, it's not like it was a fake document. It was a working document. That's why I didn't use the word fake. I said it was not real. It was a working document. Use the word working. But you, you, did you indicate it's a working document? They didn't ask you for a working document. They asked for an item. My colleague would clarify, but at least okay. it sufficed. Fair enough. Now that you say yes. it was better to comply and then be able to come and align, isn't it? Yes. Why was it difficult for you to allow the municipality to have a budget and then comply? Part of In what, the same spirit. Part of forwarding this item without, then we come and harmonize this part is a process of helping the is municipality. The spirit, if the spirit that you want to comply with the World Bank, you can also be able to allow the municipality to run in the same spirit. The stakes were higher in the former, in terms of we would it lose money. It was even high for the public to get service by the municipality. But in this case, they are, they are not losing the money, so they will get the... They have lost two years. But they have not... There has never the, been progress by the municipality. But the funds have not been lost, and yet... They have been spent otherwise. The, that the, is losing. The two years actually there's been work happening. When you look at when funds came through and when all the processes were undertaken, it is not that the two years has been no work because of lack of when municipality. The board, when the board cannot visit site to inspect works which are about to be complete. I think the, the issue on the board, you, you've had substantive deliberation when you invited the board members and you might realize it really is not uh, no, I was just it's a to, problem to be dealt with. I was just trying to separately. share the spirit <laughs> yes. that you want to comply and you are the one who's quote-unquote kanyagiri. And you, you, you agree that we are better off safeguarding the money, we don't lose but the money. Safeguard the proper way. Uh, but at least not lose it fast. No. Yes. You, 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 it is good when you are stickler of law like you yes. claim. Yes. You stick to the latter. Yes, Chair. Thank you. I think uh, you, thank you, you... Thank you. I think uh, that one, I didn't want us to lose that. Okay. Now, I'd only be asking you. Mm -hmm. uh, there is an uh, award that is famous with Kenyans mm -hmm. called Akukija. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know that. Mm -hmm. Akukija. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go back to 177. Okay. This 177, which is in an account in KCB, mm -hmm. the signatories are the manager, the CEO finance, and the CEO uh, of devolution mm -hmm. or administration for that case. This matter of 177 came up during a motion for your impeachment. Mm -hmm. And in the deliberation, you did indicate that you wrote to transfer the funds from that account to, was it a sinking account? Call deposit. A call, call account. Yes. The one thing that yes. I will tell you, what was not asked to have validated me to vote yes was, which was not answered. Mm. Did you get the concurrence of the signatories? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, in this case, as the county accounting officer, uh, such an act would be done by myself in consultation with the executive, not the signatories. Executive, signatories, executive is who? The CC is the, I mean, the governor and the whole executive committee. But the signatories are the custodians of the money in that account. Well, is in it? trust, in trust of the departments, by extension, the CC, by extension, the governor, at large, the public of Nandi. And that is at the point of appropriating or using the funds, right? But as long as the money is in the account, it's safe, and, and as long as the money is safe, any action that is meant to safeguard its erosion by way of uh, charges and all that... But temporarily the money was not in the me. account. Sorry? Temporarily the money was not in the account when it was transferred. The money, the money was in, the, in our county account. No, the account that they... Because I would imagine... Yes. You are a signatory of account. Yes. Then you go to check uh, the bank balance in the morning. You sleep and you wake up in the morning you check bank balance. Then you notice, oh God, 177 million is gone. Where did you sign? You are not on the no. My question is, 
did you have concurrence? Of course, you are the boss. Did you notify the CEOs of your action? Uh, chair, number one, the money did not disappear. I wish you would clarify no, where moved, what the money was. One, it was moved from one account to the other. By the bank, right? Drew direction from? Myself. Yes. Yes. And you are not a signatory to this account. You are the county accounting. You are the county CC for finance. So, Chair, how did the money move? You gave direction, right? And how did the bank you write, do you it? You wrote, isn't it? Yes. My only concern is not the action by the bank. It is the act by you to direct the bank. Chair, every action that I take, and most of the times, and every day I take actions to ensure there is prudent and safeguarding of resources. But in consultation? I will always consult where it is necessary. Correct. Yes. So did you consult the two CEOs? They, I'm sure and the manager? No, I, I did this in consultation with Waziri. Fine, uh, administration, the CC4? Administration. CC4 administration? Yes. Who is not a signatory? Yes, but that is, I, con I, I mentioned it to her after I'd done the action. After? By way of informing, yes. Before, before the action was done? No, I did a unilateral decision. It's a unilateral decision? Yes. Not even the governor was aware, not even the cabinet? Now, this is normal operational no, activity no, okay. I do every day. It's okay, just yes. respond. The governor was not aware as your boss. I and the cabinet was not aware. This is to chair. This is to imagine that the functions of the treasury should be vetted by everyone. Yet they are very sensitive information. No, they are not vetted. But you respond to someone. You are you are yes. you are answerable to someone. To the extent you are that answerable the, to the governor and to the county, the the, Ken, the non public through the county assembly. Yes, I'm answerable to the governor. But to the other departments, to the extent that they ask, if they ask anything, they will be able to get. Just yes. respond to this. Yes, the governor was not aware. No, you see, we do reports. It's okay. I do actions and I report actions on a periodic basis. Some serious actions are not taken without consultation. Yes. So this was not serious. Governor was not aware. This action that we're talking of, is, is it a good action or a bad action? I don't know. Just tell me. I in don't your, know. In your opinion, Chair. I don't know. I, am an, I play the oversight role. Yes. I just want to know how it was done. A good action happened. I, I oversight whether bad or good. So, so which one was this? So this was a very good action. So with concurrence or knowledge of the governor uh, we are required to do good whether so informing or whether not good informing. or bad was the governor on the no the governor got to be aware of it later of course the cabinet you see cabinet has to sit for me to get a cabinet so to sit for a daily reported, operation have you ever reported this to the cabinet whether before or after uh, re to report to say what that an action was taken to this effect there are so many actions that take place we don't know this everything. one specifically this action does not is not weighty for me to say that it has to be shouted. So 177 million is not weighty. What is 177? What happened, Chair? What you did? What did I do? You tell us. I increased the money in our account. That is prudent. I ensured that the 177 not only remains as 177, but it increases. I will allow your equivalent, the Chair of a Budget, to ask you a question on that. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chair. Maybe I would also seek clarification on the, you are saying some funds were transferred from one account to another account. Mm. So can the CC clarify it was from which account to which account so that it can be on record? Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, CPA Walter, and uh, thank you, Chair. Let me clarify the action that took place. We, when we got the funds from our uh, central CRF, uh, account from Central Bank, 177 million. I, with my treasury team, determined that it was not prudent to put them in a current account that shall attract charges, which then shall mean that the money shall be eroded. Yet, it wasn't time for us to start paying the contractors because the real, the sole reason why we couldn't put it in, uh, why, the, why we brought it to a commercial, uh, a current account was to be able to make payments without necessarily going through the the long requisition process. So what I did, and the World Bank does not aspire that we put money in a fixed deposit account because then that would, would, would mean that we are out to actively make uh, money, is to advise the bank to, instead of hold money in the current account, to put it in a call account. A call account is different from the current account in that you put the money in an account that can earn some bit of interest to cover for its charges. And any time you need to access the money, you just call it. That is why it's called a call account. If it had been a fixed deposit account, then it would mean that it has to go to its maturity period, maybe if it's a three-month period. 
And if you call that money that is in a fixed deposit account earlier than the three months, you are slapped some serious charges. So that was not the direction we went. We just advised the bank to put it in a call deposit account. And I think the letter is there. And it was not a case of opening a new account and all that. Just holding it in a call deposit and the bank knows how it does. As and when we need the money, we can call it from there. It achieves the effect of us ensuring that we don't erode the value of the money from uh, that uh, accrue from bank charges and commissions. Okay, thank you. Maybe chair. Yes, well, uh, can allow such that uh, the CC can table the same uh, transaction for the purpose of. Uh, All right. So, yeah. uh, CPA Lagat, you'll be able to copy with us the letter that you wrote to the bank. Yes, chair. And uh, the response or action mm -hmm. from the bank. Mm -hmm. Because the reason why I didn't vote yes for this case as a chair, I didn't understand this. So tell me, this call account, does it have signatories? It doesn't have a signatory. Can anyone withdraw from that call account? You cannot withdraw. You have to move it to the, or to the, to the account. This is just an escrow account created by it the bank. It has to move where? To which account? It has to move to the same original account that was opened, that has the signatory. So in essence, it's like taking something that is sitting in the sitting room and you put it in a bedroom. So make me aware because yes. now you teach teachers. Yes. If now I have one million in the bank. Yes. Does the bank have an authority, me as my as a signatory, while sleeping in Tinderet, a letter comes saying that money in that account, take it to call account, and the bank acts. And yet the letter coming is not from any of the signatories. Well, that, that's a different uh, case for your personal because, account. Because KCB is a commercial bank and has guidelines and regulations from CBK, which I don't know yet. However, our interest is because this money in CBK is public money. But the signatories are individuals. So can that happen? My one million, can it be taken to, so that I'm sure when I'm intended, my 100,000 is safe? Unless fraudulently. How does yours not qualify as fraudulent? It is not fraudulent. I am the county accounting officer with the powers given to execute any role. So the, that bank, is the bank is on the no. He knows you, the bank knows you. Correct. As the county accounting officer. That is why. For them to be able to take that action, yes. they need, do they do a verification? How, what would be how would they confirm that this is the right person? Number one is I appoint the signatories and the bank has my template of all the signatures. Every withdrawal that happens, the bank has to notify me whether it is legitimate. So the letter appointing the signatories is by you? It is signed by myself. the bank? Yes. Share with us that letter. It is there. Thank you. Provided. Honorable members, so you're saying my 100,000 will always be safe? Uh, well, I could show you a better use of it through the same way I did with no. this so that you don't no, no, lose no. your money. No. <laughs> And honorable members, honorable Elfas. All right, I think uh, at this point, Waziri, yeah. the documents that we have asked you, be sure to provide us. Okay. And uh, I would challenge you, the spirit, to enable the municipality to work. Remember. And probably, as a closing uh, comment from you, what is bedeviling the municipality from working? Because this committee was to look into the functions and functioning of the municipality. Well, thank you, Chair. Uh, um, 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 I wouldn't give, an, I would just, from my perspective, try and say maybe number one is the municipality under the new dispensation is a bit new so the first thing is this this something that has not been done before it is two years and i'm saying it is new in the sense that we are not looking at how the county councils used to operate this one has a bit of a, a broad mandate and stricter ways to do things number two is some disconnect which is always normal the normal breaking issues between the municipality and the board where there's still been some synergy of who does what and how the reporting structure should work. So my main thing is there is no clear roadmap of implementation of things and the reporting and the feedback mechanism to the board and ultimately uh, to the governor, which is something I know they are alive to and they are working towards streamlining. So they really need to move with speed to ensure that 
as again as i say the, as a person in charge of planning let there be a clear roadmap and that's why i still stick to the idep because for me it will help me tell them you need to stick to this path this is what you promised in the idep this is the this is the kind of resource you need human resource and financial and that will help so they need to stick to getting a clear roadmap being a widely traveled person yourself Maybe. the municipality the cap seven municipality was brought to life with the same act and the funding of k up uh, up and support program is not only to nandi it is to other municipalities compared to all other municipalities that you have visited how would you rate the performance of cap seven municipality well mm, we we are not the worst but we are not the best a lot still needs to be done i would say there are certain municipalities that have gotten their act together because there are certain counties that have for example kiambu has about 12 municipalities kiambu county them they have been able to to pick up very fast and learn their mistakes and they have been able to do a number of things uh, for us being a largely rural county we we only have one thing we are focusing on the municipality we ought to have done better but i think we need to we really need to put our act together i guess this is part of the process to help the municipality pick up so are you saying is it human error that we are not able to move with speed well we cannot say human error uh, exclusively i would say the reason we're not able to move with speed is that clear road map which would even streamline human errors human errors will always be there with us but as long as you have a so two map, years two years down the line we are still learning uh, as long as we've not really implemented the first budget autonomously they're yet to even begin learning they're yet to begin learning yes until they execute their budget is it, fully is it is it that's why i'm saying is it is it the board as an entity or the board as a, the people in the board the board as an entity thank you i think honorable uh, uh, maybe before you conclude uh, this is my own observation not for the adoc committee to the cc finance uh, the reason why we are not moving faster is because the board uh, has not been facilitated to do all what it takes so that uh, it the municipality can be a full fledged one so please do what it takes to facilitate uh, the board members all right thank you i think that's just a comment from the honorable member ngati honorable members i think uh, at that point uh, we would conclude uh, this engagement with the uh, cpa lagat and we thank you for responding to the invite thank you chair thank you uh, you'll be shown your way out by the senior term thank you i appreciate the time thank you Remember this session is suspended for 4 minutes